In this video, I'm going to take you through how I made an instrumental song, uh, a piano beat song, so piano based with electronic drum beats underneath, in Reaper, which is my door, my digital audio workstation of choice. Now, this will give you some tips and tricks that you can use when making your own music in Reaper. Hello, I'm Paul Douglas. Please subscribe, click the notification bell and like and share this video. So I've just put my glasses on, put the headphones on and uh, all ready to go here. It's 2020 at the moment um, and we're in the middle of the coronavirus uh, big mess. Um, during our lockdown in the UK, uh, here in England, um, we're not in full lockdown at the moment. There are some restrictions, but uh, early in the year we were in a, a pretty much a full lockdown. Um, during that time, I made this uh, piano beats collection. So that's a collection of songs that are based around the piano, but have electronic drum beats underneath. And they're, they're full productions, you know, there's all, there's guitars in there and, and uh, synths and bass and organs in some cases. So uh, full instrumental songs, but based around the piano with those beats uh, underneath. Uh, now I will put the full song right at the end of this video, so if you're not interested in me waffling on about how I made it, you just want to hear the song, then skip right to the end. This is going to be quite a high level overview of how I put it together. I'm not going to go into huge details in the individual uh, bits of it, um, and that's because I've, I've got those planned for videos coming up. Now hopefully you will pick up a few tips and tricks yourself watching this video for making your own songs in Reaper. Oh yes, and uh, this song does not actually have a title yet, so if you've got any ideas for titling this song then please leave your suggestions in the comments section below. Now, as with all, all songs, all music, um, this thing started with an initial idea, so uh, one day I just sat down at the piano, messed about for a bit, and came up with this little sort of chordal uh, melody idea, which I'll, I'll play now. And it starts going round again. So that was the initial basic idea. So that, that little melody chordal idea forms the basis of the whole song. Now, a few tips here. Um, when you're recording an initial idea like this, do not worry about perfection. Do not worry about playing it perfectly. Um, just get your idea down as quickly as possible. And don't worry about the exact tempo. Um, when you come to record it, you make a guess at the tempo and set your metronome and reaper accordingly. But if it's not right, exactly right, it doesn't matter. You can always change the tempo and reaper later, and it's clever enough to uh, change all the parts that you've recorded to that tempo. Another tip, if your, your idea is uh, a keyboard idea, um, or a, another, another MIDI instrument that you can record using MIDI, record using MIDI. Um, don't record the audio for the simple reason that in this stage you're very much in a writing mindset in Reaper, not in a recording mindset. So you don't care if things are played perfectly. You want the ideas down as quickly as you possibly can before you forget them. And MIDI is brilliant for editing later. So you can play something, you can play it pretty badly, but you've got the idea down. You can then go into your computer in Reaper and edit it and fix things and change things, copy them, you know, say, oh, wait a minute, I don't like an F sharp there, I want a, I want a D instead, and you can just move the note yourself manually. So that's a quick tip there. When you're first um, trying to get your initial ideas down, record using MIDI, if you can. And of course, I mean, I, I imagine anyone who's used any sort of door knows this already, but copy and paste. So when I recorded that initial idea, so uh, that's from, from there to there pretty much, I then just copied and pasted it a few times so I can play around with that. I can play around with adding other stuff. 
Uh, I can play around with, with, with dynamics and all sorts of stuff. So that was the initial piano idea. Next thing was the drum beat uh, that I wanted. So in, uh, in here I'm using Easy Drummer, um, which I imagine you'll probably have heard of. Um, it's a product from a company called ToonTrack, and it's great for, I mean, it's a wonderful compositional tool for drums, and there are all sorts of um, MIDI patterns in here. Uh, they're all ready-made that you can use. So I spent a little bit of time finding a, a drum beat that I quite liked, um, and that is uh, this one that I'll play now. And that's it, basically. Uh, and again, when I'm in this writing mindset, I'm not going to worry too much about details that they come later. Let's just get it down as quickly as possible. Now, I use Easy Drummer, which does cost money. money uh, I, I bought this years ago. Um, but there are free drum simulator plugins that you can use. If you just type free drum simulator plugins into Google, you'll find loads of them. Um, in addition to that, you can also find MIDI patterns. Um, which you can use uh, with those drum simulator plugins. So you don't have to uh, manually program your drum beat in a MIDI editor or playing it on a keyboard with your fingers. You can do that if you want, that's perfectly uh, it's a fine thing to do, but you don't have to. If you, if you want to give yourself a head start, you can use someone else's uh, MIDI patterns. And again, I copied that lots of times. So. Um, it, it's not quite the same the whole song, as I'll come on to explain in a bit. Um, but I, initially I started with, you just record it once and then, you know, just in repeat, you can just control and drag and you can uh, copy it and then copy it again, etc. to your heart's content. Now, a, another general tip when writing songs is, I don't know about you, but I find playing to a metronome incredibly dull. It's really boring. Click, click 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 is not inspiring so I will very often just get a drum beat any drum beat an easy drummer and play along to that instead just to give me that timing source and it's much nicer um, to play along to that than it is to the incessant clicking of a metronome now the other thing with these if you notice if you, if you just you can just look at the pattern there the pattern has some extra stuff added to it there so you don't have to stick to your bass pattern throughout the whole song so So in that bit there, it, it's what I started with. In this bit, I added a little extra, which will be fairly obvious when you hear it. So we've got that addition of that hi-hat sound there, which uh, when you hear the whole song, um, you can see how that picks up and fits in with the, the increase in dynamic there. Sorry, I meant to unsolo that so you can hear the whole song. So that's when it's kicked in, really, after that piano intro. So we've got the basic, uh, the basic theme down there, which you know you can call that the verse, if you like. Um, next thing, I had to come up with ideas for the middle eight and the chorus. Um, so again, I sat down at the piano uh, and came up uh, with ideas for both of those. I'll just play you those now. that leads into the chorus so that 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 pre-chorus bit is quite deliberately a little bit more a little bit more lively it's got a little bit more movement in it and then we bring things back down again when we get into the chorus i'll play you that now Um, so that's the chorus. So those are the three uh, basic um, 
parts that are in the song. So the, the, those three sections, the, the verse, the, the I don't know, middle eight or pre-chorus, whatever you want to call it, uh, and the chorus. Um, and they're quite deli deliberately slightly uh, different in the dynamics. So we've got the verse, which is quite sparse uh, and, and slow, and quite down in a dynamic sense. And then we've got the pre-chorus, which is the opposite, busier, more movement, um, sounds a little livelier. And then the chorus is somewhere in between those two. And it's more sort of melody based than the chordal basis uh, of the other two. So we've got the three basic uh, sections of the song down. Um, now we've got to turn that into some sort of song structure. Um, and here's an, another tip for you, you know, um, you've got to copy and paste things to form a basic song structure. So one of the great ways to do things like that in Reaper is to use uh, markers and regions. So you see these little numbers at the top here. These are markers. Um, and I can create one of those if I just select somewhere. If I just press Shift M, that will create a marker and I can call that whatever I want. want uh, there we go, we've got a marker. Um, I'll just undo that, I don't need that one. And I can jump to all those by just pressing the relevant number key on the keyboard. So I want to jump to number five, I'll just press number five. You can see that the cursor's jumped to five there. If I want to jump to eight, it jumps down there. Um, and that's great for, for marking out the different sections of the song. With regions, you can select. So I could select this whole region there. Uh, and that could be a verse one region. So instead of pressing Shift M now, I'm going to press Shift R. And you can see that has created that one there. And what that means is I can move about all this stuff as one whole. So if I wanted to move this to like just there, there we go, it's moved. I'll just undo that. Uh, and again, if I want to copy it, so say you, you've got your verse section, you want to copy it twice to form verse one, two, and three, just hold control. Um, if I drag it right to the end there. So you can see that uh, we've still got the original one there, but it's also copied it to there. And I could then select this one um, and, and copy it again to there. Uh, and that's a, a great feature of Reap and really, really useful for forming a song structure very, very quickly. Uh, I'll just undo all that. Um, and of course, you can test out different types of song structure very quickly as well. So if I'm remembering correctly here, I ended up with, so I've got my little intro, I've got verse one, the little pre-chorus section chorus, verse two pre-chorus chorus. Um, now, verse two, you can see there's some extra parts added in there. Um, I'll come on to those in a minute. Um, and then I ended with the last chorus. Um, and that gave me the full song skeleton. I'm skipping over this little breakdown bit, because I'll talk about that uh, in a minute. So we had uh, piano and drums there, and that's the basis of the song. The, the next thing that, you know, if, if I just play you the piano and drums um, in any section, it doesn't really matter where. Um, Let's pick that one. Even from that little bit I just played you, you can hear it, it's, it's massively lacking in low end uh, to my ears. Um, so the next thing that comes along is the bass. Now the bass I used here, although I've got a little um, picture of the, the headstock of a bass guitar there, I didn't play the bass guitar to do this. I uh, played the keyboard for several reasons. One, I'm a better keyboard player than I'm a bass player. Um, two, I can record it again using MIDI, which for all the reasons I've already mentioned, very easy to edit. I don't have to play it perfectly. Uh, I can get something down really, really quickly. And, and it's something that's very easy to mess about with and edit and um, fix uh, later. So let's just play you, I'll just play you a little bit of the bass on the own, on its own, and then I'll uh, show you it in the mix. So we go for uh, part of the verse here. Let's just solo out the bass. So you can hear, very, very simple, and it's doing nothing more than just following the root notes of the chord played on the piano, but the purposes of that was absolutely fine. If I play a bit of the bass in the pre-chorus. Now 
Now, I remember what I said earlier that the, the pre-chorus is uh, is more is more lively. It's got more movement in it. It's busier, um, quite deliberately. Um, and and the bass part I, I came up with fits in with that theme, you know. And then again, in, in, when it goes into the chorus, it's sort of in between the two uh, those two dynamic levels of the uh, verse and pre-chorus. This is the chorus bass. little notes at the end. Back round into the verse again. So let's just put that a little bit into context. Rest of the instruments back in. And you can hear now that it's got that that, that missing bottom end is suddenly filled in and it sounds a lot more a lot more full. I'll do the same with a little bit of the pre-chorus. hear how that bass is supporting the movement um, in the pre-chorus and we'll jump onto the chorus now. And that's another tip for you. Um, this isn't really a tip specific to Reaper, it's a tip uh, about songwriting in general I guess, is that when you're designing your different sections don't have them all the same dynamic level, no, so the same um, the same feel. Uh, so, you know, you might want to change the volume or you might want to change the you know, how busy it is um, just to get you a contrast between the different sections to keep the listener interested. If everything is all very, very one, I was going to say one paced, that's not really the right word, but I can't think of the right word. If it's all one dynamic, let's just use that word, um, it's, it's going to get quite dull for the listener. So that, that was the bass. Um, again, I recorded it using MIDI. Um, and that tip about using MIDI, you know, when I say uh, record things using MIDI, that doesn't mean you have to keep them. When you're in this writing stage and, and you're going to be editing and changing things all the time, uh, MIDI is very, very useful. But once you've passed that and you've got things that you're happy with and maybe you want to re-record some parts, you can always record, you know, I could have recorded a real bass guitar um, and, and replaced the MIDI with that once I got everything written I wanted to, I'm actually quite happy with the, the, the MIDI bass sound I've got here, so I didn't do that. But So that's always worth um, keeping in mind that that's a, that's a philosophy you can use, you know, write using MIDI, but then record using audio. So coming in towards uh, the, the final bits of the writing stage of this, at least now, was as I hinted at before with your different sections, you don't want them all the same dynamic. I needed to add a bit of variety, you know, up and down uh, dynamics, flow. Now I, I've got that with what I have already, but I wanted to make a bit more of that. So and I'm going to call this the sugar coating. Um, so I added a few guitar parts, um, a few synth parts, and the, the way I did with this was just to experiment. You know, can I, oh, if I add a sustain, sustained chord part on the guitar here, what would that sound like? If I had a picked chorus part, what would that? And you, you just experiment. And, and if I remember right, some things worked, some things didn't, which aren't here anymore because I threw them away because they didn't work. Um, so if I just play you a bit of verse two to make a, a distinction between that and verse one, this is what I did. And that again leads me to another tip is make your verses different. You know, don't make verse one and verse two exactly the same. If you play your song to someone and you played, you know, a verse, make it so that they know which verse it is. They don't know, well, that could be verse one, two or three. They sound exactly the same. Make them different somehow. So this is verse two. And you can see on the, on the tracks here that I've added uh, a couple of guitars which uh, have a tremolo effect on them, which work really nicely. And then I've got this uh, overdriven guitar here, which uh, you can hear when I play. So you can hear the trem guitars in the background, the st strummed chords, and the overdriven guitar just playing the slid. Ah, 
da, da. that slid note which works really well. Okay, I'll jump onto the pre-chorus here because there's uh, another overdriven guitar part which is playing a little counter melody. You hear that? So again, that fits in the mood with uh, the, the increased busyness, the increased movement in that pre-chorus section. And then we jump into the chorus and the, the trem guitars are back in the chorus, which worked really nicely. Now they're quite low down in the mix. Um, they're not meant to be a feature, they're meant to be a sort of textural thing but it works really well and it adds something and it, and it makes chorus one different from chorus two. It's also worth mentioning at this point um, you can probably see down there at the bottom the uh, these, these brown colored tracks. I added a pad synth here um, which again is, is a very very common thing to do just to fill out a mix. Uh, we just play with it so you can hear it fade in slightly here on the pre-chorus. Again, quite low down in the mix, it's not a feature, it's a textural thing. You can hear it in the background there. Just adds a, a, just a little bit just to fill out that sound. And now we come to the last uh, section of this piece that I, uh, that I created, and that's this breakdown section just before the last chorus. Um, so I, I put it together and I had, a, you know, what was it, the verse? pre-chorus, chorus, verse, pre-chorus, chorus, and then a final chorus, excuse me. But I thought it needed just a, a little something else. Um, and and I, I used a, what's a common technique in song, which is a, a little breakdown section before the last chorus. Um, the breakdown being drop out almost all the instrumentation. Um, and I'm sure you can probably all name modern pop songs that do this all the time. So if I just play a bit of the, the chorus two, then going into the breakdown section, you'll see what I mean. So all we've got there, piano, bass drum. And then we build it up slightly by adding the bass coming in here. Very, very simple. It just gives you a sense of something's coming up in a minute. Now, and then we explode into that last chorus, um, which is the big finale with all the instruments in. Um, so I'll just play you a bit of that. One thing I haven't mentioned is that little uh, counter melody in the, the overdriven guitars there in the last chorus, which was just something that I was playing around with, um, you know, just experimenting with the guitars and thought, oh, yep, that works really well for that last chorus. So that's another tip for you there. You know, if, if uh, you think your song needs another little section, um, that breakdown uh, idea, you know, dropping out almost all the instrumentation, um, typically before your, your last chorus or double chorus in a song. That's a, a great technique to use. Um, some might say it's overused, um, but there's a reason things get overused and that's because they're good. Okay, so that was the whole thing written and put together. Um, and uh, here's a little tip for you. That was written with a writing mindset. So that very much is what, when you're using your door, Reaper in this case, uh, when you're writing, you've got a few things that, that are priorities. One, get your ideas down before you forget them. That's got to be absolutely number one priority. Two, don't worry about getting them, writing, uh, recording things perfect at that stage. Doesn't matter. You want your ideas down. Um, make use of all the tools that you have in Reaper for you know regions copying things so you can make structures very easily. Um, use MIDI if you can because it makes things very very easy to edit and, and uh, try things out you know oh uh, 
this D chord, I don't like that there. I wonder if the D major seven will work better. And you can change that in MIDI very, very easily. Whereas if you're using audio, you'd have to re-record it. Um, and that would be what you do with your writing mindset. Now, once you've done that and you've got your thing all written how you want it, you switch to a recording mindset, which is completely different. This time, you want to record things, I was going to say perfectly, but don't aim for perfection because you'll never ever get there and you'll never, you'll never finish. Um, but you want to record things played as well as possible. So this time, you know, if you play a part wrong, you want to re-record it till you play it right. Um, if you're recording guitars, you want to make sure you're in tune. Whereas in, in the uh, writing mindset, it doesn't really matter if you're a bit out of tune. Um, but in this recording mindset, you absolutely need to tune your guitar before every single take. And I know that's a pain in the ass, but you need to do it. So it's interesting, though, those those two mindsets you can use. And I, I whenever I'm working in, in Reaper, I'm uh, recording stuff anyway, uh, I'm very much in one of those two mindsets, either writing or recording. And that's exactly what I did in, in this uh, song. So uh, I went back and I re-recorded things that I didn't think I played very well, or maybe I wanted to change slightly, uh, very much having switched to that new um, recording mindset now. Um, and the result of that is what you hear, what you see on the screen now. So that was the writing and recording finished. Next stage in a process in making a song in a, a door is mixing. So um, I mixed this song. Now I'm not going to go into any detail whatsoever about mixing um, here because I have another video coming up where I'll go into much more detail about what I did in this song and my mixing process in general. So if I just press Control M here, so switching from the track uh, view into the mixer view here. So this is the mixer. Um, now, a very brief explanation of mixing. Uh, I imagine most of you know what this is, but mixing is quite simply um, making the volume of all your tracks correct, you know, balancing them out. So, you know, uh, you might say, oh, the bass is far too loud here. I want it quieter. So you, you pull it down. I want to hear more of the guitars here. Uh, the piano should be louder here. That's it, really. It's balancing the volume. So, and I tend to think of the word mix like, you know, uh, a mixing bowl if you're making a cake you've got all your ingredients you put together but you've got to have the right amount of all of those ingredients if you don't your cake's not going to work it's, either, <laughs> it's not going to rise or it's going to taste like crap um so that that's mixing and there are you know there are ways you can do that you can actually manually move faders like that um but you can also do other things like um compression which will uh if, if your your track has a wide um a wide different lots of different volumes then it, it can squash that effectively so the differences in volume aren't too much um, you can do things like automation so you can actually rather than having to move these faders manually you can record you moving them and then play that back so it will do it automatically for you and and of course eq which is essentially a volume control for individual frequencies so you know you might say well, wait a minute this piano has got too much bass in it um, so I'm going to just uh, take a lot of the bass out of the sound. And that's mixing in general. Um, and I will, uh, yes, as I said, I've, I've got another video coming up on that. And the final stage, after you've uh, mixed it and you've got a mix that you're happy with, with all the, the, the relative levels balanced out, is mastering. Um, now, what mastering means these days is essentially um, getting the volume level to a stage that's comparable with other commercial recordings. That's it really these days. So you might do a little bit of EQ at that point, um, maybe a few other things, but that, that's really what mastering is these days, is um, getting the volume level comparable to other songs that might be, you know, played on the radio or on Spotify or, or Apple Music or wherever. Um, mastering used to be preparing your song for being uh, uh, transferred to vinyl or to CD, um, which it still is, but you know, you. That, that's quite a specialised process with the, and you need a proper professional mixing a mastering engineer to do that. Whereas, uh, you know, mastering, just getting the volume right can be done here in Reaper or uh, there are actually automated tools which will do it for you. 
Now, I know I've glossed over the, the, the mixing and mastering stages there, but I've done that quite deliberately as I've, uh, I've got videos coming up on both the mixing and mastering of this song. So we've come to the, uh, the end of this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, please subscribe, hit the bell, like and share this video. Um, please check out the links in the description below. Now, as promised, I'm going to end this video with the full song, so I'll play the full um, song at the end. Um, once again, thanks for watching. Keep making music, and I'll see you again in the next video. Cheers. Thank you.